everyone. Um, we're so excited uh, for today's webinar. Um, uh, small but mighty Giving Tuesday tips for small nonprofits. Uh, so today's webinar uh, will be led by myself. Um, I'm my name is Lisa. I'm the marketing communications manager here at Mighty Cause, as well as Ashley, um, who is our community development specialist here at Mighty Cause as well, and she'll be just joining shortly. All right. So just a couple of housekeeping things before we begin. Um, if there are any questions that come in um, during the webinar, feel free to utilize the chat, uh, the questions tool on your Zoom control panel. That's just an easy way for us to see questions coming in. I'll be looking at the chat periodically uh, to see if there are any quick questions. Hi, Ashley. Um, so uh, we'll be uh, double checking that as well. This webinar will be recorded and will be sent in an email after the webinar. So don't worry about whether you're going to receive it or not. We'll send the slide deck over as well as recording. All right, so just a couple of uh, points in what we're gonna cover today for our agenda. Um, we're gonna be covering uh, Giving Tuesday. What exactly is Giving Tuesday? If you've never participated before, why is it important to participate? A uh, goal setting, how do you set your goals for um, Giving Tuesday? How to create your game plan? driving support uh, for your Giving Tuesday campaign, utilizing the resources that you have, and what do you do um, after you receive your donors? Um, how do you do the follow-up? Um, so before we jump in into Giving Tuesday, um, just a little background about Mighty Cause for those of you who are unfamiliar with Mighty Cause or brand new to Mighty Cause. Uh, we've been in the nonprofit space since 2006. We're a year-round fundraising platform in addition to hosting an annual Giving Tuesday event. So nonprofits like yourselves um, can utilize our platform for any of their fundraising needs. We're catered to small to medium nonprofits. So uh, we've try to create a, a place where, uh, you know, we're providing the technology and you guys are creating that impact in your community. So we offer a couple of different tools and resources available to you on the platform. Um, by registering for Giving Tuesday um, on Mighty Cause, you'll have access to some of these tools um, for your fundraising. So we have reporting and analytics, donor management, um, peer-to-peer uh, -peer fundraising, uh, customized donation processing or, or checkout. Um, so a lot of different things we'll kind of cover throughout this webinar as well. Um, but again, if you have any questions, please let us know. All right, so I'll be covering uh, kind of this first section of what exactly is Giving Tuesday and why should you participate in Giving Tuesday? I think if you guys are all on this webinar, if you register for this webinar, you probably understand why Giving Tuesday is so important. Um, it's a day built to give back. Um, it was created in 2012 as a response to all the consumeris consumerism of Thanksgiving or Black Friday, Cyber, Cyber Monday. So it is a dedicated day to give back. Um, so that's why it's one of the most important days to fundraise on. Um, according to MNR Benchmarks, 30% of annual donation volume occurs between Giving Tuesday and December 31st. So that's a huge portion of fundraising. That's a huge portion of donors that are willing to give during that time frame. Um, and it's also just a great opportunity as we all here to be part of the movement, engage with your community and engage with your donors as they're, you know, in the spirit of giving. So Giving Tuesday occurs uh, every every year on the Tuesday after Thanksgiving. So this year, this is December 3rd. Um, our Giving Tuesday event that we host, um, early giving, so when you can start receiving donations that will count towards prizes, starts November 19th. Um, and our registration uh, is already open. So you can go ahead and register um, for Giving Tuesday. Um, and it is completely free to register. 
um, all you have to do is fill out a short form and you'll be registered for our event. Um, and our event is a 24 uh, is 27 hours, so it starts uh, midnight of Giving Tuesday and will end Pacific Standard Time, so 3 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. By registering, you'll have access to a lot of different tools and resources, social media templates, um, checklists, guides, etc. cetera. Uh, and I've talked a little bit about uh, some of the things, those things that you'll receive. Um, as I mentioned, we do offer prizes every year for um, nonprofits who are participating. So that's also one incentive to register for our giving event. So uh, where do you go to register? You can go to givingtuesday.mightycause.com. Simply click the register today button. Um, you'll see, you'll enter your organization's name or EIN, and then you'll be directed to fill out the form. Once your form is um, submitted, uh, you can then, um, if you're already an admin, you can fill out your to-do list on your page. Or if you're not, if you're brand new to the platform, you'll be added as an admin, and that's where you can complete your to-do list, which is just two steps of simply adding a logo image or uh, and a banner and adding a thank you um, page message. It's really just a um, couple steps to make sure that you're all ready for Giving Tuesday. And last thing, um, as we're covering kind of our Giving Tuesday event, um, one of the things that we offer on our platform is our Accelerate plan. So if you are looking for um, additional uh, fundraising tools, such as an embeddable long form on your website, you want a more CRM system, um, you want the ability to post volunteer opportunities, um, those are available on our Accelerate plan. All right. so. I think I've covered all of the things with goal setting, so I'm going to pass it um, off to Ashley, and she'll be able to cover this part. Oh, Ashley, I think you're muted. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, thank you for letting me know I was muted. And sorry for the delay in my arrival. A uh, uh, little bit of technical difficulty, and as. Lisa was sharing with Giving Tuesday, we're certainly excited as we're gearing up. We've had a lot of, a lot of activity, a lot of organizations that have already joined us, but we're excited to have you all today to go through how as a maybe a smaller nonprofit, how you can sort of get started with um, your volunteers and with your staff. So I'm sure that Lisa already mentioned that um, we're, uh, as we- uh, Ashley, I think- uh if you want to share the PowerPoint screen. Oh, it's not, hang on. I am sharing my wrong screen. Got it. Maybe. I have done this before. Are we there, Lisa? Yeah, you are now. Sorry. Okay. So here we go. Um, we're just going to jump right into goal setting. Uh, so with when you're getting ready for Giving Tuesday, the a key piece is always going to be laying that foundation, which is going to be your goals. And the foundation is what's going to set you up for success in the long term. And with our goals, we don't want just big outlandish goals. And we also don't want minor things that are easy to accomplish, but not really uh, gauging of where you are as a nonprofit. So we use SMART goals as the, the idea or a metric that any organization can follow. And with this, the main things that we're going to be looking at are uh, whether or not the goal is specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-based. Uh, and what that looks like in real life fundraising, we have a couple of, of illustrations or examples. So a, a good, as far as a specific goal would be, you want to retain donors from last year, from last year's Giving Tuesday or last year's end of year giving, but what would that look like? So do you want to retain all of them? Well, that's, that's not really um, a fair expectation. So we want to um, retain 60% or 50%. Maybe it's not so much retention, but you want to look at uh, establishing greater recurring donors, or maybe you want to look outside of the monetary and you want to look at how you can be engaging your supporters in new ways 
this year. So maybe you've gotten good at using social media, but this year you're going to start to implement some videos on social media, or maybe you're new to social media and it's just going to be about establishing a few more apps that you can participate and engage your donors. So it's all going to be based on what works best for your organization, where you are with your supporters, your community. And we also want those goals to be measurable. Uh, so it's not just retained owners, like I mentioned, but we want to give a number to that 60%, or we want to gain that 15 recurring donors that are new to the new to the nonprofit. And you need that to be measurable so that you know, okay, well, we only gained 10 last year. So now we're going to push ourselves for 15 this year, but we're not going to expect 30 new recurring monthly donations based on last year if it was only 10. So you want to have a, a good measure that way. We also want to have goals that are achievable and realistic. So for example, we're not going to go for 30 recurring donations if last year we only had 10. Uh, not only that, but let's say when it when it comes to some of those non um, non uh, monetary things, do you have the staff to create a video or do you have the content to include on social media? So you want to sort of look at some of those things to say, are they achievable? Can we raise $8,000 online? Can we secure that matching grant? Um, also, when we're looking at achievable and realistic, you can look look to that forward facing what's happening in the future. So using Giving Tuesday for end of year giving, it's right around the corner. Maybe you want to look at some of your um, your messaging and say, okay, what can we what can we do? What's feasible? Or maybe you want to introduce something. Let's say that you did a little bit of peer to peer fundraising earlier in the year. Well, then it's very realistic to say, hey, let's approach that again for Giving Tuesday and, and work that into our campaign. And finally, you want your goals to be time-based. We need a start and a finish, just like anything, whether it was the school year when we were younger uh, or it's paying bills as we're older, we need a start and a stop. Uh, this gives us a couple of things. It adds urgency to what your what you're asking of your donors. We only have until uh, Giving Tuesday, there's only that two week time of early giving and you're trying to build momentum, but it also gives a relief point that you know, okay, after December 3rd, we can breathe for a minute and then we can start to review and steward our donors. So you want both. It also gives you that ability to sort of judge how are we doing on our goals if you have a, a start and stop time in there. And as you determine your goals, you're going to do that by determining your priorities. And how you determine your priorities often means taking a look back, analyzing your donor data, kind of seeing where you've been, seeing where you've done really well, the bright spots in your, your budget history and your fundraising but also where do you need to go? So you wanna identify those developmental priorities. So you have, whether it's donor retention, donor acquisition, maybe it's recurring giving that you want to be focusing on. It might be something like engaging partnerships. So maybe it's uh, securing those matching grants. It's different things for different organizations and that's you're gonna know that based on your history. And we have a way to help with that. So we have a retention report that is available on any and all organization profile pages. Now, the key thing is the information that we have in our report is from any interaction a donor has had with Mighty Cause in the past. So it could be from last year's Giving Tuesday. It could be from any interaction throughout the years. So this is super great, particularly for organizations that are returning this year for Giving Tuesday. You can specifically look up your donor retention, donor interaction from last year, and that's going to help you gauge, especially during early giving, sort of where you are and how you're doing so that you can then uh, specifically campaign, not campaign, but market to and address donors in a certain way, donors who have given in the past, donors who are new. But in addition to that donor data, donation data that you have, whether um, it's from 
10 years to just last year. A big key piece is also talking to your supporters, talking to your staff uh, or your volunteers. Maybe do a donor survey, get a feel of your what your community is thinking, what your supporters are thinking and how best to engage them, what they are willing and able to do when it comes to not only donating, but also fundraising in general. So now that you now that you have those goals, now that you have that foundation, we're going to start to look at creating your game plan. This is, in essence, the first question, what are you fundraising for? Um, are you fundraising for next year's budget? Or is there a particular campaign or particular initiative that's going on that you're either launching in the fall or you're hoping to launch next year, but you're gearing up for that now? And also, not only what are you fundraising for, but how is your campaign going to stand out among the crowd? We know that Giving Tuesday is a major time for all organizations to engage their supporters for funds, but also to engage them when it comes to volunteering and engaging the community. So how are you going to stand out with your campaign? And that's something to be to be thinking through. It's not always an easy answer. Sometimes you got to think out of the box a little bit. But this focus is then going to be carried through your campaign, through emails, through social media, even on your donation page, the checkout flow, you can be, uh, dis you're going to be displaying that, that um, your goals there and your focus also in your thank yous and your follow up. So the focus isn't just for getting people to donate, it's for engaging them throughout the process. You're also going to be creating testimonials, those uh, video and those photo assets for social media. There's going to be a lot that supports your focus. So that's something to keep in mind as you're developing your focus, that it's going to be woven throughout your Giving Tuesday and maybe your end of year campaigning. So now as you take that focus, you're going to create your key messaging. And for Giving Tuesday, you're going to want to define two to three key messages about your Giving Tuesday campaign. And this is going to talk to your supporters about what you're trying to achieve and why. And we'll get to our example uh, in just a moment. Uh, now, the uh, your top level nonprofit key messaging is going to get filtered through all of your Giving Tuesday campaign messages, like we mentioned, but you're also creating messaging that speaks to your nonprofit's mission and your core values, and it communicates why you're, why this particular campaign for your nonprofit is so important. There's a lot of campaigns throughout the journey of a nonprofit, and right now we want to remind your supporters that what you're doing right now, what you're focusing on right now, is important. It needs their attention. Uh, we also, or as we we look at this, we want to keep your key messages somewhat broad because you're going to be developing talking points as you get further through your um, your preparation process. So we're going to have those talking points, facts, figures, stats, things like that. We'll touch on that later, but your key messaging, you want to have that as, as a bit more broad so that then you can branch off into those more specifics. So with our example, we have Lisa's Food Pantry uh, and her Giving Tuesday campaign messages. We have three. And the first one is my favorite, but all three are important because they all speak to different things that are going to resonate with different portions of your community. So the first message, we are raising $10,000 as we so we can afford to expand our food pantry's physical space and feed even more people in our community. You're being very clear on what you're doing. You're raising $10,000 why you're doing it so that you can expand the food pantry's physical space. And the secondary, not secondary reason why, but that mission-minded part is so that you can serve, you can feed more people in the community. It's very clear what and why you're doing what you're doing. But with your topics or your messages number two and three, there's an increased need for our services in the community and we must grow to meet the need. And we want to provide 100,000 meals by the end of 2024. And this campaign will set us up to do that. That message number two, that's giving a very clear, we are here and we need to be supported so that we can continue this mission in our community. Our mission isn't over by just expanding that 
physical space. There's a great need and we belong in this community. For that third message, we have that urgency of we want to provide, we need to provide 100,000 meals by the end of the year. So there's an urgency that's going on there. And there's a great opportunity for people to take ownership and take part in their community by joining with Lisa's Food Pantry to meet these key messages. So how do you go about zeroing in on those two to three key messages? Uh, there's a there's a couple of questions that we have. If you can give a quick brief answer to these questions, it's it's gonna set you up for those two to three messages. The first is, what does your nonprofit do? How would a donation affect your nonprofit? And how can a donor support your nonprofit? Now, when you're thinking through how to answer this, there's a big answer for each of those questions. And there's a lot of details that you can add. And it's all true. But with your messaging, we don't want to get into all of that. We need to be concise. We need to be brief. But we need to be passionate as well. So think of it this way. How would you describe or how would you answer each of these questions to a child? You want it to be straightforward. You want the opportunity for more talking points to come along, but your key messaging is to be concise. So something to, to sort of think through and definitely a slide to come back to as you're thinking through those through that messaging. But now we're ready to talk about those talking points. So Getting what you want to do as you're putting out your key messaging, you want also the ability to then elaborate on whatever it is you're going to do. And when you elaborate, you want to be able to give those specific facts, the figures, the statistics. You want to be able to bring that into conversation. Or if you're having an email exchange for somebody, you want to have all of that information together. So think about some of the basic information about your history as an organization, about the work that you've done. You can also think about what's the important information specifically about your campaign. So it, it's not so much of the mission work that you have, but you're going to, you if we have our deadline on December 3rd, well, then you want to make sure that that's conveyed. You also want to make sure that people know you can start donating on November 19th. You don't have to wait until December. So there's certain things that you want to make sure that you work into your different uh, conversations, your different communications. And we also want to pull some of your key accomplishments, your key numbers. You want to demonstrate what you've done in your community. And so whether that accomplishment was last year or the year before that you've been building on, be sure to show what you've been doing in the recent past. And also that allows you to then discuss what you have going forward and your visions uh, for the future. Also, these are this is good information to be sharing with your staff, with your volunteers, anyone who's going to be sharing about your organization, especially if anybody's going to be speaking to the press or if they're going to be speaking with someone who may become a greater investor, make sure they have that information to pull from. Next, we're going to be building our timeline. And because preparation is key, this timeline and building this out thoughtfully is a really big deal when it comes to your Giving Tuesday planning. So you're going to build your priorities and your goals, and you're going to build them into a fall timeline. So even though Giving Tuesday is in December, you're leading up to Giving Tuesday all throughout the fall. And there's opportunities, depending on whether it's a holiday or something like that, there's opportunities to engage your donors, whether it's in the community or online. And well, so actually, you want to be, yes. I, interrupt you. I think you may be a slide ahead. Um, right now we see talking points. There we yep. go. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Uh, so with that fall timeline, you just want to be able to be prepared for the, the whole opportunity to engage with your community. It might be in person, it might be online, but that timeline is going to let you do that. You also want to set your benchmarks for each month so that you can track your progress. There's a lot of time between now and December. And if, if you have certain benchmarks that you want to meet, that also gives you the opportunity to adjust as time goes on. If you're a little bit behind schedule or if you're kind of getting ahead of schedule, so you want to have those, those benchmarks. You also want to define your team. So their roles and their responsibilities. So hopefully you're not doing everything on your own. 
If you are, we always encourage you to find some volunteers to help. And as you start to define who's going to do what, you're able to hone in on who is working within their strength, uh, also what their time permits with their work-life nonprofit balance. So we want to make sure that everybody is set, everybody knows what they're doing, but also you want to build out a calendar with those different tasks divvied up so that everyone knows who's doing what, when they need to have it completed. But then you're going to reconvene on a regular basis to make sure everybody's doing okay. Does anybody need additional help? Is anyone already completed with what they need to do and they can do more that you didn't, you just didn't know if you would have time to do. So the more that you're able to stay in communication and stay within your timeframes, your timeline, you're gonna be in great shape for accomplishing all that you wanna be able to accomplish. Also in planning ahead, it's not just your calendar. Uh, we have an amazing nonprofit toolkit. It has a planning guide. It has a checklist for success, which is one of the best pieces that we have because it lets you know, what am I supposed to be doing? Especially if you're new for Giving Tuesday, there's a lot of different things that you can be doing. This checklist will help you know what to be doing and in what order. We also have a Giving Tuesday playbook ebook that is super helpful when you want to dive into just deeper ideas, other opportunities that are available. So the three pieces that are in our toolkit, definitely something to take a look at. And we also, we, you, we also want to gather that Giving Tuesday dream team. Every organization works better when you have everyone working within their roles where their strengths are and working together. So we would like to recommend a project manager, a social media manager, email marketer, donor liaison, and definitely we encourage you to use your, utilize your volunteers. Now, I know I just kind of read through that list and maybe you don't have somebody to meet all of those needs. That's okay. People can overlap or someone might say, listen, I can help write out posts for social media, or I can write letters for donors that we want to be engaging. But on the day of, I can't be helpful. So maybe you have a social media manager prior to Giving Tuesday, but on the day of you recruit a different volunteer who's going to be responding and interacting with people online throughout the day. So it doesn't have to be one person. These are just general roles that need to be fulfilled. And then you can work within your team to see who best would fit what role. And remember that timeline. We're going to look at some of the items that you want to make sure get onto that timeline. So your email plan and your scheduling, this is going to include who you contact, when you contact, and what you say. So think about some of the different designations of different donors that you have. Some of your donors have donated during Giving Tuesday for the last 10 years. Some of them haven't. Some of them are brand new as of July. So each one needs to be treated a little bit differently. And when you're going through your donor and your donor list and you're looking at kind of who's who, if maybe you're doing uh, recurring donors and you're going to be asking them if they would be interested in giving $5 more a month, whatever you're going to do for that, you want to make sure that your text within your, your outreach is fitting for them. So those emails you want to make sure are directed towards each of those giving groups. And you also want to make sure that things are spaced out well so that they're not inundated just the week before Giving Tuesday begins, but that they're spaced out and they know Giving Tuesday is coming. Great opportunity for that as we have email templates, also best practices within that nonprofit toolkit. So you don't have to create everything from scratch, which is what nobody wants to be doing, but it also, it's going to save you a ton of time. It's going to take that off of your plate. You can plug in your information and then you can start scheduling those within your, your email scheduler. Very similar with social media. Go ahead and take some time, whether you're looking at a couple of different blogs, if you're looking in our toolkits, take a look at some of those social media best practices so that as you're weighing out your different posts and the time frame of things, you're developing your writing posts that are engaging, also that are visually engaging. It's not just about text, but it's also about the graphics that you use, the videos that you use. You want all of that created beforehand. You want it scheduled out so that you're not dealing with it in the midst of giving season. So the sooner that you can get that, 
squared away and sort of set up, the better you'll be. Definitely take a look at the Giving Tuesday social media guide to help walk you through some of those things. Also, for those who are looking for useful marketing material uh, or tools, we've noted a few of our favorites here. There's a number of assets that are out there. We have found these to be super helpful for nonprofits uh, and just getting engaged. So again, if you're small and you don't have a large staff or you don't have many volunteers, these can help make things so much easier. You're not developing things from scratch. Uh, we use some of them on a regular basis, daily basis almost. So don't feel like, oh, well, I need to do this. No, go ahead and put in that little bit of time first to learn about some of the different options that are out there and then use these marketing tools. Now let's take a look at driving your support. So we're, we've got ourselves planned. We're doing pretty well that way, but there's some key pieces that we want to take a look at before we launch to the world. A big thing with that is reviewing your website. Also, as a side note, for organizations that have done Giving Tuesday on Mighty Cause before, if your to-do list is already done, fantastic. But I do want to recommend take a look at that thank you message that you have. Make sure that it's updated if there's maybe you have a date that's listed in there or if there's been a, any bit of a change in the organization. You want to make sure you jump into that thank you message. Make sure everything's up to date. In addition, on your website, we don't want a clunky website. We want to make it as easy as possible for donors to learn about who you are and donors to find that donate button. So just take a quick look. Sometimes we get used to just having our website and it's there. Giving Tuesday is the perfect time to just take a review, look, make sure that everything is super easy for your donor. The easier it is, the more likely they are going to donate. So make sure that process is streamlined. Also, we have an embeddable widget. We also have an embeddable donation form that's available that you can add to your website, embed it right in. And when donors use either of those uh, checkout flows, it's, those donations are automatically attributed to your Mighty Cause, or yeah, your Giving Tuesday on Mighty Cause uh, metric. So donations that are coming in, they're gonna count towards those leaderboards and those prizes without your donor ever leaving your website, which is the easiest way to do that. Also, you have supporters. You have donors. You just need to get them donating. So one of the biggest things that you can look at is that call to action. And within that call to action, it's a lot of it has to do with what your donors are seeing on their website or what your donors are seeing in their emails. Um, with call to action, that's that CTA button. And what we long for or what we look for in that um, is typically it's going to be a button that is hyperlinked so that your donors are experiencing a seamless, again, a seamless experience to that checkout flow. And for the most part, what you're doing in that call to action is you're asking your donors to donate. Every now and then you'll be asking them maybe to create a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser. But for the most part with Giving Tuesday, the goal is to donate. So whatever your call is, don't be afraid to have it more than once on your website or in an email. We also recommend that um, with the color and the placement of the CTA button, be thoughtful. Have others take a look at your website to see, is it visual or, or is it visible? Is it easy to find? Is it easy to maneuver through? Because that's going to make a significant impact on whether or not people click your call to action button and move move forward through the donating process. So a couple of examples um, with that call to action, it doesn't have to be the word donate. Uh, it could be give hope, give meals. It might be make a difference, donate today. Uh, support furry friends this Giving Tuesday. It's up to you what you want your call to action to be. Sometimes it's nice to have different ones depending on where it's located in your website. So kind of keep that in mind as you're going through. You're not always saying donate, but you are always calling them to act, to donate, to get involved with you for this Giving Tuesday. Also, CTAs, they're not only for emails or websites. You can also use them on social media, and they're a great opportunity to 
engage or to let them let your donors know there's urgency in this call to donate. We need you to do this now. Giving Tuesday is upon us. We need you to engage now. We need your support. So it's a it's a good tool that you can use in any part of your uh, donor engagement. We also encourage donors to create donation tiers within your checkout flow. Uh, this is super easy on your organization profile page where you can add not only different tiers, but also, also donation descriptions. So you wanna be transparent about why you're fundraising and what you're looking to do with the funds that are raised. So creating those donation levels that can specify to a donor, this is the impact that you're making. For example, you can feed two families for a week with this donation that engages your donors, even in the checkout flow, reminding them about your key messaging and the impact in their community. You can also use it as a way to build recognition through distinct names. So let's say you want to label different tiers as champions, heroes, superstars. You can add this identifier with each of those donation levels. It engages, again, on a personal note with the donor. Also, something to keep in mind, the Best Giving Tuesday campaigns, they focus on those solvable problems. Things that can be solved, not the big pie in the sky. So you don't just want these random financial targets or random donations. No, you wanna have those real numbers listed so that donors see it's a real number going to pay for real things real needs within your community or within your organization. And you can do that right in that checkout flow. And it also gives you that sense of when you're looking back at your donors and you want to qualify who were the, the ones who were champions, who were the heroes, who were the superstars. And if you want to, you can even build out some of your thank you messages towards that after Giving Tuesday when you're stewarding your donors. Now let's take just a quick moment to look at recurring donations. These are kind of a hidden gem in the world of nonprofit fundraising. The more recurring donations you have, there's just that little bit more of a breathing room when you know what you can expect every month. So Giving Tuesday is a perfect opportunity to ask your donors to consider being a monthly partner or being a recurring donor, however you would like to word it with your donors. You can always your donors will have this option to do a one-time or a monthly gift in the checkout flow, but it's something within your uh, promoting that you want to make sure you're, you're presenting that as an option to your donors. Giving Tuesday is also a great time for peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. So peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, it's a technique where a nonprofit, you're leveraging your existing donors to bring in new supporters by asking them to create a fundraiser. And then when they create that fundraiser, now they're asking their social networks to donate. They're asking their social networks to get involved, to, to learn and to know about what you're doing. But why would your supporters be interested in this? Because it gives them the opportunity to deepen their relationship with you. It's part of the stewarding process. They're no longer just being a donor, but now they're helping to steward and to bring in other donors. It also gives them a really fun way to volunteer. It's something they can do from their home on their computer, or if they're at the park and they're on their phone, it's something that they can do that doesn't necessarily require a time commitment when you need them. They can do that at any time. It's also a non-monetary ask. One, it shakes things up. Donors are used to hearing about a request for donations, which is what we need to do in fundraising. But it also gives them the opportunity, if they're not able to monetarily support you right now, they can create a fundraiser page. They can ask other people to help donate and to support in that way. And finally, it gives them an opportunity to tell their story, especially if they're an alum of your organization, whatever it is that you do, if they've been able to benefit from your, uh, your services, they're able to tell other people about what you're doing. They're able to share why you are precious to them, why you are important to their community. And that's a big opportunity for many people to give back to you who has done so much for them. Some examples, some quick examples of what peer-to-peer -peer fundraising can look like. 
Charity walks and marathons, those are pretty standard. They're very well known. Also those birthday fundraisers. And so even though those are birthday fundraisers, that general idea can just be directed towards Giving Tuesday. Uh, also with those board challenges, it's a great way to get your board involved in fundraising, involved in Giving Tuesday, and also a great way for them to get re-engaged with why they love your nonprofit and why they are on your board. This setup for a uh, peer-to-peer fundraiser is super easy on Mighty Cause. Uh, you create, you as the organization, you're going to create a fundraiser template. Your supporter is going to go to your organization profile page. They click the fundraise button. They follow the prompts from there and it's super easy. And then they're done. And then they pass it out to their friends and family. We also have other peer-to-peer -peer options. We have team pages that brings together individual fundraisers. So now they're working together for a common team goal. Fundraisers each have their own page. As team members, all of the funds that they raise are shown on that team page so they can see their collective good work. Uh, they can encourage each other. It could even be a friendly competition. It's a great place for uh, volunteer groups, workspaces, again, board challenges. If you wanna have that little bit of competition, it's a great opportunity. We also have event for peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. So our event pages, they're a little bit more built out. The idea is you can have multiple teams and multiple fundraisers working together that feed back into that main event. So think about that walkathon. You have your event, which is the walkathon, and then you have your teams, your individual fundraisers. Some of this works really well for Giving Tuesday. Others, they reserve that for a different, a different time of the year. So moving on to using what you have. You're a small nonprofit. You might not have the resources that other nonprofits have, and that's okay because you don't have to have all that everybody else does. Again, we looked at those marketing tools. So there's a lot out there to help. The big thing is being willing to use what you have. So an essential trick for small nonprofits is to automate, automate, automate. If you can automate something and get it off your plate, it's the easiest, it's the best way to go, and it ensures that things get done, that it's not left out or forgotten on the day of. So go ahead, schedule the emails, schedule those social media posts, use those templates from the toolkit to get those written now and then have them scheduled to go out. You'll still wanna to monitor to make sure that everything is working as it ought to, but the actual doing of the task is taken off your plate. You can even automate your first two thank yous, and that can be done through Mighty Cause. We automatically send your donor, once they submit that, once they click that donate button, they're taken to your first thank you page. You could think of it kind of as a donation confirmation page, but that's where you get your first thank you. You can include a video, you can include graphics, you can include text that says, we are grateful for you donating, and then you include your next call to action button, essentially, where you can redirect them to your website, to your social media, wherever you would like them to go so that they're remaining engaged with your organization even after they've donated. The second thank you that we offer is through a donation receipt. As soon as the donation is made, we send out that tax deductible donation receipt. So not only you don't have to do the receipts, but you can also customize that with a thank you message. So you can have your first two thank yous already taken care of immediately following that donation. Remember, you don't have to do everything. Uh, you're going to do as much as you can as you do that planning and that thinking forward. Remember, our goals are, we want them to be realistic. We want them to be attainable. And you also want to make sure what you're doing resonates with your community. That's your focus. Also, you have your volunteers. They want to serve your nonprofit. They want to serve their community. And you might be surprised the number of nonprofits you have that have some hidden talents. So maybe there's somebody who can do your video, video editing, or they love being on Facebook and they would be happy to be engaging your donors on Giving Tuesday. So you never know who you have unless you ask. So definitely be willing to reach out to your volunteers, send the emails, post on social media if you're looking for someone. Also, there's a lot of people who have time that they're able to devote. So they might not be a guru on the computer, but they're willing to write the thank you notes. 
So you just need to be able to be willing to ask so that you can find those good fits. We also want to suggest a great tool. Volunteer Match is a website that helps nonprofits find people who have skill sets who are willing to volunteer and you have a need. So it helps to match the nonprofit and the volunteer together. And now is a great time to sort of introduce yourself to that tool, especially since we're still a little further out from Giving Tuesday. It's a great opportunity to start to engage some of those, some of those volunteers. And volunteers can do just about anything. Now we do wanna make sure we're being careful of donor information and things of that nature. So we need to be cautious, but there's a number of roles and activities that your donors, your donors, your volunteers can do that have nothing to do with that confidential information. So if it's the social media posts, if it's drafting emails, developing content, maybe it's the marketing or making phone calls, all of those can be done by volunteers. And there's a number of things that can be done from their own home or not in your office, especially for those of you, if your headquarters is your kitchen table, you can't always have volunteers at your kitchen table, but they can be taking care of different needs from their home or from their workplace. So keeping things electronic is also a super big help in that regard. Uh, also with those phone calls and those thank you notes, just be sure that you're now preparing the, the templates or preparing the script that your volunteers are gonna use so that when they're ready, they're good to go and just step right in. So let's bring this full circle. Let's follow up, which is gonna be your follow-up with your supporters and your donors. Why is follow-up so important? It makes giving, it brings your Giving Tuesday donors, I'll say it brings them to be more likely to contribute or to be involved in your end of year campaigns or your future campaigns. When they're involved with Giving Tuesday, now they're engaged. Now they're reminded to keep an eye out for your emails. Now they're looking to see what are you doing with their funds? So now they're primed to donate again when your end of year campaign rolls on or next year when you have a campaign, whether it's scheduled or an emergency campaign that comes up. It also provides closure for your donors. Everyone is part of a story. We all like to see the start and the finish of what happens. So your donors wanna know, I provided X amount on Giving Tuesday, whether it was a small or a large donation, and they want to know how is that impacting the community? How is that going forward? Is it doing what I thought that it would do? And now this gives you the opportunity to show them, yes, you have made a difference in your community. That follow-up is so important and it brings that closure, which then encourages them for the next time, like we just said, whether it's end of year or a campaign next year, they know that you're doing with their funds what you said, and it keeps them engaged. Also, it provides an opening for your nonprofit to segue into that end of year messaging. Maybe it's your 2025 messaging. So you can build out when you're delineating between your donors and you're reaching out to those who gave through Giving Tuesday, you can have certain verbiage for them versus others who haven't been engaged throughout the year, you're gonna have that different conversation depending on whether or not they gave during Giving Tuesday. So how can you follow up with your donors? How can you do that well? Emails are still great. And when you follow up, go ahead and report on your results. Let them know we raised X amount of dollars. Reinforce what you're gonna be doing with those dollars and the impact that that's gonna be we're going to be able to make those hundred thousand dollars, um, one hundred thousand meals by the end of twenty twenty four. We are going to be able to expand our workspace so that they know we. I am making that difference, and they're excited for what you're doing in the community. Phone calls. Phone calls are great, but depending on the number of donations, it's not feasible to call everyone. So save that for maybe a unique group of donors, maybe the higher level donations or some of those recurring monthly gifts that were created. Also use your social media, post about your success and make sure you celebrate not only your donors, but anyone who fundraised for you, anyone who was a volunteer for you. It's a great time to celebrate your success as a whole at your nonprofit. And don't ever, um, 
sort of pass off the power of snail mail. Uh, I know that there's some different conversation about whether or not is it worth it, but it still matters. It still matters to donors. It still matters to your supporters. So go ahead and send the letter or the postcard. If you need a welcome packet for those new donors, it's a great opportunity to follow up. And again, to bring all of that full circle, you want to make these things personal with your donors. And that's what you're going to do during your follow-up. So now that we have all of our steps in order and we have our timeline and we can move forward with confidence with our volunteers, your next step is going to be to sign up for our next webinar, which is our peer-to-peer -peer fundraising for Giving Tuesday webinar. And that's going to be on Thursday, September 12th, also 3 p.m. Eastern time, but it's going to be a great opportunity to really dive into that peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. How does it work? and how you can get your um, get your supporters involved. And with that, I did not click for that slide either. Uh, questions. Lisa, do we have any questions? Yes. Um, there was a question that came in a little earlier, and I wanted to save it to the end because I think it's a really great question that I think can um, help a lot of nonprofits. Um, so the question was, we're a brand new non new charity with a new concept. We don't have any donors yet. What recommendations can you make for us this giving season? And I think that's a great question because we're, uh, I'm sure there's a lot of nonprofits that are in that boat, or maybe you are not brand new, but you don't have many donors. Um, and I just wanted to kind of share a story because I think of what might be the answer. So I think if you're brand new and you don't have any donors yet, right, you're going to want to use the network around you, your friends, your family, your coworkers. If you are religious, your church, your synagogue, um, et cetera, you're going to want to reach out to your network. Um, and the story I was going to share was that uh, a couple years ago, uh, my sister had a friend that she met through um, graduate school, and she found out through social media um, that her friend from school was starting a nonprofit to build a school in Kenya. And um, she was emailed about it. And she had told me, hey, I have this friend, she's starting this nonprofit. Um, it's, it's sounds like a really great cause. I'm going to forward you the email that she sent me to help support uh, their new budding nonprofit. And um, when I went to their page, they were really specific about exactly how the funds were going there in terms of, you know, how much money was going to go towards what area of creating the school. Um, and I made a donation. Again, I don't have direct connection with this woman. Um, it was just uh, an email that my sister forwarded over. So that's how you can kind of reach out to your network and encourage them to forward that on to their network. And after I made that donation, um, I've been able to see them grow. And now I I was sent an email the following year about uh, the school's progress. So again, tying in that messaging that we talked about in the beginning where and that follow up of why that was so important, because I saw, oh, wow, they really built the school. And now I've been um, seeing communication about uh, now they're raising money to um, support teacher salaries and students who can go to the school. So that's why all of this kind of together, it's really important to think about that messaging and thinking about the story and the follow up and everything. It all goes hand in hand. Um, so I wanted to save that for the end, because I think that kind of ties in everything. Um, a question that we also got is how can we sensibly and safely use AI to assist in doing all of this, especially those who are small nonprofits? Um, I'll take this as well, actually. Um, I right think, ahead. yeah, I think AI is a really helpful tool, especially if you are, are a one person nonprofit. Um, what I would say, so if you're using tools like copy AI or chat GPT, um, to kind of create email templates or communication, et cetera, or even ChatGPT can be used if you're trying to brainstorm fundraising ideas, um, et cetera. I would say if you are using it for copy, I would kind of use it as a starting off point um, because I think some of the language, it may not fit your nonprofit's branding. It, you, it, it can be sometimes, I, I think, not as natural as how people talk, but I think it is a really great way if you don't know how do you start this email or I need just kind of um, a, a, just a template of an email to use of using those resources and then um, 
taking that and putting your own voice to it. So it's a great starting off point. Point. Um, in terms of um, security, I would just make sure you're not putting any donor data in um, any of those tools. Um, as long as you're not putting any donor data in there, um, it should be um, safe to use. And ChatGPT also does have a setting where you can um, turn off any history. So they're not taking any information that you're putting in. Um, all right. Uh, giving dates. You shared the donations, uh, that donations start at 11.19 to culminate on Giving Tuesday. My organization participates through Georgia Gives. I read somewhere that 2024 begins 11.1. This is a little confusing. Thank you for asking that question. That is a great question um, because I'm sure there's some of you who are participating in outside giving events. Um, Mighty Cause is one of the biggest giving day technology providers across the country. If you are participating in a, another Giving Tuesday uh event that Mighty Cause provides a technology for, Colorado Gives, Georgia Gives, etc. cetera, um, you won't need to register for our event. You just participate in that event that you are looking to participate in. Um, so our Giving Tuesday event um, will have different rules, et cetera. So you can just worry about Georgia Gives. You don't have to register for our event. Um, really, our event is for nonprofits that don't have a Giving a Giving Tuesday event in their local area to participate in. Uh, that's not Almighty Cause, I should say. Um, uh, there was a question about the toolkit. Uh, the toolkit is available if you register for Mighty Cause. Um, again, on for Giving Tuesday, I should say. Uh, so. If you just fill out the form, um, you'll get sent an e and complete your to-do list. Um, you'll get sent an email and um, we'll include the toolkit and all of that stuff in there. Um, and again, it's a super brief uh, form that you can fill out um, and it's completely free to do that. Um, what is the cost to join Mighty Cause and um, the features ex or to the features, et cetera? Um, so if you register, you'll have access to um, a lot of our tools and features uh, for free. So you can join Mighty Cause that way. Um, I think that's a great way to kind of get acquainted, acquainted with our platform. Um, so again, you can register and I'll include the link here for registration. Um, other, oops, sorry. I Let me put a typo. Um, otherwise, um, we do have a subscription plan, so that's why it is beneficial to register for our Giving Tuesday event. All right, any other questions? And just a quick thought as um, anybody's thinking about any final questions for that, when you don't have donors and you're trying to think, what do I do? Um, just a quick, I don't know what I did there either. Hang on. There we go. Um, with like Lisa said, she went to their website and she was able to see exactly what they were going to do. And that transparency with donors and making sure that even now your website, your social media, everything is up to date and easy for that new person to walk through and say, who are you? And what are you going to be doing? Even if they donate, don't donate right now, now they know who you are. So in the future, you can go forward and certainly having maybe an opportunity for them to sign up either for a newsletter or to sign up for communication where they don't have to donate first are some good opportunities to engage with them. Even though, like Lisa said, she wasn't even in their circle, uh, but now, now she is. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and just one other question that's come in is if we registered, does payment go through my D cause? Um, that's a great question. So, um, all donations that are processed through Mighty Cause are processed through our donor advised fund, a Mighty Cause Charitable Foundation. So what does that mean? Um, that means that donations are immediately tax deductible for your donors. We handle the tax receipts. So that's something that you don't have to worry about. Um, you can customize the, the, you can add language to the receipt that's sent out, but we handle all of that tax receipt information and then funds are dispersed directly to your organization. You can set up um, direct deposit and we'll send funds directly there. Um, so uh, as well, in terms of payment methods, donors can donate through 
you know, all of the kind of primary payment methods. They can donate through ACH, credit card, um, Venmo, uh, PayPal, um, uh, Google Pay, um, I'm missing one, Apple Pay, I believe. Um, All right, I don't think I see any other questions. So as I mentioned uh, in the beginning, we'll send this a webinar out um, in an email with the recording and slide deck. It'll be sent most likely tomorrow. Um, so please be on the lookout for that. Um, and as well, we'll include um, a link to the next webinar we have about peer-to-peer -peer fundraising and our registration link. Um, lastly, if you have any other um topics that you would like us to cover in a future webinar. We're always looking for to hear what is most helpful or impactful for nonprofits to learn about. Um, so there's a brief survey that will um, pop up once you finish this webinar. If you could let us know 